Hey y'all, welcome to my live. How's everyone doing? Happy Thursday. It's almost the end of the week. I call this Friday Eve. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Hi, please let me know. These are new headphones, y'all know how that goes. In the age of COVID, let me know if you can hear me. Let me know, let me know. Hey, Howard girl. <clears throat> I hope everyone is doing well. I got my water here. I got my wine here. Where's the wine? You know, you got to show it so it's real. I got my wine here. It's that uh, good old yellow tail. <laughs> Premium. Okay. Yellow tail Shiraz. <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. I know people are joining, but some folks are already here. It sounds like my audio is good. I got my water. I got my wine. It's time to talk brand partnerships and all those good things. Yes, wine. Hey, Disa. Awesome. So thanks y'all for joining my live and, live and joining on time. The punctuality is appreciated. But no, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining my live. Uh, as you guys know by the title, just from my post today, uh, tonight we'll be discussing brand partnerships, what they are, the best practices to land one if you're an influencer or an aspiring influencer or a nano influencer like me. Um, not a micro yet, but we're growing, we're growing. Right now we're, we're a nano influencer. And you know, what I've discovered is that you don't have to have 50,000 followers, crazy amount of followers to really get started and start looking at brands that you potentially want to align yourself with as you're building. But what I found out is that you do have to have some key elements when preparing to do some outreach to these folks and really um, representing them, honestly. So it's a partnership, but you're an ambassador as well. And I think there is an art and a science to it, especially on this here social media game. What I've also learned is that every deal is different. Um, and as I try to land more of them, you know, I figure it'd be good to just share some things along the way. Share some things along the way. Um, and many of you were here after seeing my post uh, earlier today where I shared a little bit more about this full circle moment that I've had with one of my partners, TGIN. Um, my first outreach to them was in 2019. I think I first learned about them in 2018, um, maybe even before that. So it's been a long time coming. And, um, you know, the end of March was a little rough for me when it comes to this whole influencer game, entrepreneurship, side hustle, whatever you want to call it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That whole internet game, trying to get in on it. Um, and I really started blogging. I feel like I started my first blog in 2012. So it's a whole new world. I think a lot of us are navigating it, but I found some success. So I'm excited to, to share a little bit more about it. Um, and as people are joining, I'll go ahead and share a little bit more about my background for those who may not know, you know, um, and share a little bit more about why I wanted to, uh, you know, get on this live. Hey, Fanta, hype me up, sis. <laughs> And why I wanted to uh, get on this live today. Um, so again, yeah, I'll go ahead and write in. Background about me. If you're following me on social media, you see that I am a storyteller, a journalist, an influencer, a blogger. I also have a nine to five. Um, but I always have been in this marketing and this communications realm. Uh, I am a Howard alum, you know, and uh, studied journalism. So I have a degree in journalism. My professional life is in the world of marketing and public relations. And here on this little corner of the internet with my blog, um, I work as a freelance blogger on uh, business, current affairs, lifestyle, beauty, women in business. That's my favorite thing to talk about um, and the trends that are happening in that world. And um, like I said, I've been blogging since 2012. I've always been a storyteller, always been a writer. That's the reason why I chose broadcast journalism when I went to Howard. I wanted to think about the skills I had, what I was good at, what I enjoyed, the gifts that God gave me. And what he gave me was some interpersonal skills, uh, love talking to people, I can write really well. And that's where the storytelling comes in. And so that's kind of where 
I've got my start and decided that this is the path I'm going to go on to. And so fast forward a little bit. Uh, like I said, I started blogging in 2012. I remember setting up that WordPress, okay? And uh, using the photos I edited on some free online editor. But I started in 2012 with a personal blog. A few years after that, I created a travel blog for my study abroad experience in 2013. And I want to say, uh, 2013, 2014. And I want to say that experience with that particular blog really showed me where this industry was going in terms of influence, reaching audiences, and not having necessarily a big company machine behind you in order to reach those audiences. I remember um, after studying abroad and getting back to the U.S., I engaged with the company I studied abroad with, and there was a bunch of us who wanted to, you know, get more people to get out this country <laughs> after studying abroad. And I remember more than one student in my cohort of brand ambassadors, that was a brand ambassadorship for studying abroad. But anyway, in my cohort of brand ambassadors, there was maybe a few people who knew my blog, had been following it before they went to study abroad. And I was like, okay, all right, I could do this thing. That's what <laughs> influencing looks like. It's um, being organic, aligning yourself with things and ideals that uh, mean the most to you, make sense to you. Um, and when folks react to it, engage with it, there's no better feeling. Um, and so fast forward, we're here in 2021 and I'm taking this thing a little more seriously. Um, and so using those skills that I've gained as a journalist, getting some pitches as a PR professional who's pitched before. And, um, you know, as a person who loves social media and loves to study how it's growing and changing, how brands are going to continue to use it. So that brings me to where we are today, which is the do's and don'ts. Uh, landing a brand partnership when you're growing your following and you're a small influencer like myself. Like I said, I'm a nano influencer, but brand partnerships are so much fun. I love working with other folks. Not only is it a great opportunity to align and grow your brand, obviously, but it gives you that, uh, I don't know, not stamp of approval, but there is something to be said and something great about the validation that you receive by landing one and securing one and being able to um, amplify something that you believe in, amplify a mission or a brand that you that you really work with um, and also get some quints and some followers and some engagement and some growth on your end, too. So influencer marketing is, is, is the way to is the way to go where, it, where it's where it's at. Um, so, yeah. Before I go ahead and get started, I'll share a little bit more about what influencer marketing is and why folks like myself, others, you all, you know, I don't care if you're building a business or looking to launch a blog or a website or a product, you know, whatever the case is, I think there's something valuable in um, what we'll talk about a little bit more today. And I'm eager to hear your questions or any tips that you have picked up on your brand partnerships. Um, on trying to seek them and, and secure them and all of that, you know what I'm saying? Um, so make sure you keep commenting, um, ask questions if you like, and I'll put them up here because, you know, IG Live is trying to be like Zoom and everything. They got all the capabilities. So <laughs> let me know and we'll, and we'll talk about it. Um, so if you're on here, you probably know that influencers are among the most viable, fastest growing, creative, impactful sector of marketing. It's such an impactful platform for media. Um, everybody from your foundations to your, your, your fashion brands to hair companies like I work with, makeup brands, you name it. Any brand or entity out there, um, they're definitely looking at influencer marketing because it's such an effective way to reach target audiences really directly. Um, and, you know, I think you can see that more and more with Instagram. It's being built, built more and more to sell um, and for influencers and brands to leverage to really convert their followers and those who engage with them on social media into uh, buyers, into customers. And, and that's a very real thing. I know my um, Instagram, everyone's Instagram feeds are curated, but I know mine is looking, um, a, you know, a lot more advertising and I, I may not even notice it. And they get me every time I bought it. All the purses, the press on nails, they know me. The algorithm knows me. They know what I like. They know what I want to engage with. And um, it's so smart. So, you know, as folks are kind of learning and jumping in, things are ever changing. But if you get the basics down, you know, with, with working up with others, I think um, you'll find some success. So let me back up again one more time. So again, influencer marketing, one of the most viable sectors of media engagement right now. You know, it's actually projected next year, 2022. I saw this on a study. I think it was Market Hub. 
marketing hub where it'll be valued at 15 million billion dollars in 2022 so it's further cementing what i saw in 2013 and 2014 when folks were engaging with my blogs on wordpress um but it's cementing its place as a core piece of communication strategy and if you're just joining you'll hear that i said in my nine to five i work as a account manager and marketing executive in, in public relations um and so we're always looking at what's going to be the next trend or what's going to get our clients what they need and influencer marketing is definitely one of those things. Um, and I also saw, I think in the same study, Marketing Hub found that 82% of consumers would take a recommendation from an influencer like you and I, <laughs> while data from, I believe Nielsen reported that African-Americans over index, they're 44% more likely than their white peers to engage with brands, to support them on social media. Um, so, it, you know, the need for African-American influencers, influencers of color, um, and influencer marketers that kind of, you know, fit those criteria are going to be even more sought after um, moving forward. You know, we know that Black women over-index in the beauty industry as well. Um, the spending power of the Black community overall is just so, so powerful. And so, it's, you know, I think it's a good idea to get in on it um, and really figure out a way to do so organically and one that's really true to you as well. So... <sighs> okay, let's go ahead and get started. What y'all saw today was a full circle moment for me. I shared that one of my brand partners, um, TGIN, or Thank God It's Natural, yeah, it came through. And I posted it really, again, on a really rough end of March. There were some brand partnerships that I've secured, and I was like, oh, I could have done this better or gotten a bigger payout if I had done that or paid more attention in my contracting here, but I had to step back and, 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 and really give myself a pat on the back for even recognizing the areas of growth and really, um, you know, giving myself kudos for, for landing some partnerships and knowing some things along the way. So that's what really prompted the post today, um, you know, in the midst of those really difficult past few weeks of March. Um, I saw that TGIN posted a piece of the content that I prepared for them earlier in the year, and it was just a really good you know, reminder and good pick me up, good dose of dopamine um, when I saw that. And so I thought I would share a little bit more because not everything goes as planned. <laughs> but again, this is such an exciting opportunity and area of growth for marketers and brands alike and influencers. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started with what I think is the first do if you are looking to secure brand partnerships as an influencer as a business person um or someone who's interested in just growing their presence and their impact on social media specifically i'll be talking about instagram and my experience on instagram that is my primary social media platform um last year i did relaunch my website as kind of a, a form of owned media and what owned media is is essentially um what it sounds like it's a piece of media that you owned instagram could shut down tomorrow but my website's still gonna be up so um i think uh what i was going with that is you know i'm going to be talking about instagram but, you know, maybe in another video, maybe in another blog, we'll talk about how, you know, you leverage your content on other platforms. But I'll be talking about mainly brand partnerships and the ones that you may see on my Instagram profile. Um, and the first piece of advice is know your value proposition. Um, I don't think there is any following too small to really get started on this brand partnership wave and really seeking out different um, companies to work with. But I think before you get started on anything, and one of the things I learned was that you have to know your value proposition. And what that means, what that means is knowing what you bring to the table, right? So I know that, um, you know, at my core, I am a storyteller. I focus on the stories of black women and other women in business. I also um, cross that at the intersection of current affairs and news and other topics relevant to those I'm seeking to talk to in my content. I also um, know from changing my profile to a business profile that the, I get a clear picture of my demographics and really get to see who's engaging with my content and better tailor what I'm putting out to those who are really engaging with me. Um, so the first do is know your value proposition. Um, know what you're offering to brands me in particular, I know that I'm offered them a direct line to women of color, primarily black women from the ages of 18 to 34 in metropolitan areas, including Washington, D.C., New York, and Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and that 
is a value proposition. I reach out to brands who I know want to look and reach more women in that in that demographic and more people in my demographic. Um, and so I think really understanding what it is you provide, what your profile or your website or whatever other form of owned media that you have says to others is going to be extremely key. You may think you know, but when you sit there and really think about it, you may notice that when it's time for you to put them into words and really um, in, into to, into words and, and really verbalize what, what it is that you do and what it is that your brand stands for, it may be a little more difficult. So I would definitely, as the first step, Ensure that you know your value proposition and what you're giving brands when you reach out to them. Um, and when you're requesting their work and their partnership, people are busy. And more and more um, with the growing popularity of influencer marketing, there's probably more and more coming in their inbox. So, you know, when you know when you reach out to folks, you want to just make it the best shot, you know, you possibly can. And I think that starts with knowing what you bring to the table and knowing your value proposition. So um, a way to get some quick stats if you have not done already is to change your Instagram into a business profile. You don't need to do the same on Twitter. I believe um, you can see your insights or your analytics or who you're reaching um, with just your regular regular profile. Um, you can do the same with Facebook as well. If you have a Facebook page, not your personal page, but if you have a Facebook page or a Facebook group, you can also see the analytics for that. And because Facebook and Instagram are integrated, you'll need to, you'll, you'll see both. They're one and the same in terms of what you see in terms of demographics and how you can see them. Um, so know your value proposition and, and, you know, a good way to do start doing that is to uh, change your profile to business so you can really see your analytics. Um, the second thing is, and, and you know what, that value proposition piece, I don't want to say it was a little easy because it was easy for me because I think my personal brand has evolved over some time you know um but i think honing it and really specifying it to whatever platform you're looking to get your you know your brands from your partnerships from make sure that's clear and make sure you have an understanding of it so you can explain it to others as well <laughs> um the second thing in this um oh yeah this goes to one of the questions we have in, in the comments too is one thing you want to do is ensure your profile is brand ready and brand friendly. When I was changing my Facebook, or excuse me, my Instagram to a, a, a business profile, it, it depended on what my Facebook page was categorized as. So I already had a Facebook page, like business page up and running, and it categorized myself, I think it's a website or a blogger, and um, what you call it? So that, that's what dictated it. So I had to change my, my settings on my Facebook to change it into blogger. I think I had, I had website before and I didn't really speak to what I was putting on my, my Instagram profile. It wasn't website -y things. It was more of a blog piece. And Evan, I see you see, I see you say they have a creator option now. I didn't have that when um, I changed my business profile. That may be more applicable um, for other folks, especially if you're doing strictly uh or the primary focus of your social media platform or your Instagram platform is to promote these brands and be a full-time influencer, um, or you're more of a creative, like you you do video, you do photos, um, you know, you do creative direction. I think uh, the creator option works really well for those types of things. I think they work well for entrepreneurs. I really honestly think the label for that business profile piece is less important. And the more important thing is that you have a business profile to begin with. So you can start tapping into your analytics and so that your profile appears to be more um, professional to those who look at it. Um, it. It's just one of those easy things that's free to do and just takes your profile, you know, up a notch. <laughs> this girl's official. She's not playing. She has a little subheader. It says creator. It says blogger. It says entrepreneur. It says website. Um, obviously, make sure I think it goes without saying that it should be applicable. Um, so if you're going to use the creator tag in you're more so like, I don't know. I don't know. I'll look it up. But if you're not a creator or you don't think that applies to you, then don't choose that option. Um, I think what works best for me is blogger. And from, because that's my primary focus of, 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 you know, my content in my own media, my website is the stories that I'm telling. I want it to be anchored in that journalistic skill set that I have. Um, and the brand partnerships are an extension of that. But the, the core of mine, um, it makes sense that blogger is you know, my tagline. So that's the second do. The first do was know your value proposition, know what you're bringing to the table, know what you're presenting to brands. Again, the second one is ensure your profile is brand ready, business ready. 
Again, one tip to do that is to change your Instagram profile if you're using that as your platform, which I can assume you are because you're on my IG live. But if you are using Instagram, change it into a business platform. But I also think making sure your um, brand is, or excuse me, your profile is brand ready is having some type of example of what brands can expect if they work with you. You know, is your is your content clean? Is it, you know, you know, is it, um, I don't think feeds need to be planned out and manicured so perfectly, but I do think it needs to be, um, whatchamacallit, I do think it needs to be thoughtful. So ensure your profile is brand ready by uh, making sure your feed posts have some type of organization or thought to it. Um, and have an example of what you may want to show people. I noticed I was trying to reach out to brands and hair care brands off the strength. I was just like, look at these, look at these writing clips from college, you know, <laughs> look, look, look at these words that I'm giving to you. I know how to craft a good sentence, you know what I'm saying? But I realized that nothing on my profile reflected the types of partnerships or the types of work or content that I planned to create for these brands that I was reaching out to. So being a, being brand ready and being um, business ready is I think showing on your profile as much as you can, especially if you're on Instagram and it's a, such a visual platform. It is a visual platform. Uh, show something that you can do. Uh, show that hair post, show a mini tutorial, leverage the different tools that Instagram has um, that allows you to show off a little bit. And I will start with what you have. When you're getting your profile brand ready and you need to share an example, use your camera phone. And you know, I'll use, an, I'll use what I did as an example. Um, if I was, you know, I would use the hair products I'd already have in my shower <laughs> and put something together that mimicked what I thought a brand post would look like. Um, so that way, when I was reaching out to those brands, I had something to back it up with a little bit. And I definitely found an increase in success, an increase in responses once I went beyond telling them, you know, this is my spiel. This is my LinkedIn, whatever I sent at the time. These are my little clips. It wasn't really, it wasn't giving what it had to give for them to give me the partnership. <laughs> so um, I definitely would say getting your profile brand ready and showing some examples of what you intend to do with uh, products when you get them is a really, really good, um, is a good thing to do. Okay. Oh, well, Bianca, I didn't know that. So the business account setting restricts some features like music and creator accounts allow for features and ways to you get ways to get creative with your content. Um, that's awesome. I may look into that. I think that's a great, uh, a great tidbit that I wasn't necessarily aware of, but I did notice that with doing different stuff with reels and IGTV, I would get flagged for different usage rights with music and et cetera. And that may be because of maybe this new uh, label that they have and the benefits that come with this new label. So I'm gonna look into that. That's a good, I didn't know about that. Okay, creative, allows you to get more creative. That's awesome. And you know, I think that that's probably, you know, in the batch of new features they've gotten with that shop feature too, where you can shop directly from the platform, which is a game changer and um, harmful to my bank account. It's a mess. Okay, so recap. First is know your value proposition. Know what you're presenting to brands when you reach out to them. Two, um, ensure your profile is business ready, brand ready. Make sure you change it to uh, a business page so you are labeled as a creator or a blogger or a website or whatever is most applicable to you. Um, and have examples of what the content you plan to create already on your profile gives folks a little bit more to, to go off of, which is always nice, especially if you're just getting starting out, just starting out. Because you may not have the vanity metrics that, um, vanity metrics that a lot of folks you know, can get really quickly, right? They look at followers, how many people are following you, how many posts you have, and what those initial nine posts on your feed look like. And that's all you have to work with. So if you can keep that updated, um, and again, with content that, that's exemplary of what you do, I think you're putting yourself in some good shape, especially as you're growing your, your following. The last do when landing partnerships or getting ready to get your outreach on, right? is do your research <laughs> do your research it's so good and I, I, I think it's so key and I think um research and maybe <laughs> proofreading is like the same do I'm gonna loop them together I think you have to do your research um with how I like approach brands that I want to work with I straight up think about the brands that I like and that I want to work with. I feel really um fortunate that I get to work with brands that I want to and not ones that I necessarily um I don't say have to, but 
they're not brands they're, I'm not working with just anybody right like there are requests that come in my inbox and in my comments and my DMs that straight up don't align or I know that I can't fold into the content that I already create it's going to look weird it's going to look like it's coming out of left field and I don't really rock with them like I'm not really uh you know trying to sell a, a flat tummy tea or what did I get before um some pet products I don't even have a pet that's that's an extreme example of something not aligning but if it's something that you that you you know is not aligned with what you say your value proposition is and it's not aligned with the audience that you know you're building um don't go for it but back to my third do do your research i think it's important to know who you want to reach out to for example um for me being um a person who loves to tell the stories of women of color and black women in business and entrepreneurship i love to support black women businesses um you know they're the fastest growing segment of entrepreneurs um black women are the most educated segment of women of people as well most college, college educated i say all that to say our buying power spending power and business creating power is out of this world and it's so exciting for me to get to amplify those women amplify those black owned brands and um align with them I, it's just exciting to support them and, and get them more shine and get the word out that's something i genuinely love to do and so those are the types of brands i try to work with um tjin is a black woman owned brand xv beauty shout out to them one of my recent um folks that i've worked with is a, is a black woman owned brand um the home depot box i i featured was was filled with black owned brands as well um and so that's what i like to do that's what i'm about and so those are the brands I seek to work with. Um, and so in reaching out to the brands I'd like to work with, you have to know who you're reaching out to. Um, and I think that's key. Uh, I think it's as simple as a LinkedIn search or a look on their website. But you don't want to put your full-fledged, full-fleshed out pitch through a DM. One, there's probably not enough space but you want to reach people as directly as you possibly can. So looking for the email of the person who does brand partnerships, of those who does who do social media marketing, a lot of larger brands have influencer marketing coordinators. Those are the folks you want to reach out to. Um, you don't want to work reach out to you know the person in shipping, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to get to the right person and you just drafted that beautiful email and that beautiful pitch um what you call it for nothing so definitely do your research and make sure you're 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 reaching out to the right person because one of the things you'll have to do when you know getting started and growing your following and getting more partnerships is pitch yourself you have to be your biggest fan and the art of the pitch is one in itself and we could do a whole like deep dive on that but i would say the surface level of it is to do your research of the brand what current um campaigns do they have going on uh everything is out there and very transparent on instagram what are they featuring on their website right go on their linkedin what are their executives speaking about what does the team structure look like linkedin allows you to go look at a brand and you can see right there how many employees work on it and you can view those employees and just start looking for the titles of those who have those applicable titles that I just mentioned, the brand partnership manager, the influencer marketing manager, the social media manager, the, you know, get the most applicable person you can reach out to. Um, and that's who you want to reach out to. Um, and also know what the brand has going on. What are their offerings? What are their products? You don't want to see, you don't want to go in cold. And um, although you may have, when you pitch a kind of template for how you go about it, you may need to uh, switch up the specificities with the actual brand. Um, and again, we could we could deep dive into that in a whole nother live, but do your research. So that's it for my do's. My three quick do's are know your value proposition, know what you bring to the table and what you provide to the potential brand. That'll also help you determine your pricing, right? If you know what you bring, if you know what your demographics look like, if you have an idea of what they're looking for, it'll make you all the more confident when you iron out the, the rest of those details when it comes to completing a brand partnership and landing one. The second do is ensure your profile is business and brand ready. So change it to a business profile, make sure it has the cleanest look, make sure your bio is buttoned and tied up. Um, and have examples on your profile of the types of content that you would produce. Folks eat with their eyes. They need to see what's, what's happening. They react more if you show them than telling them. So make sure that when folks click the link to your Instagram profile after you pitch them and you land in their email and they've opened it, 
that you got something that they, they really want to look at. And the third is do your research. That goes back into what I just mentioned. Do your research on the brand. Make sure you're reading, reaching out to someone who is applicable and makes sense to reach out to. Um, you don't want to reach out to someone who manages their orders. They're going to be like, what is this? And folks don't always take the time to forward to their colleagues. So make sure you reach out to the correct person. All right, let's get into the don'ts. And as I'm talking, I'm like, oh my God, there's so much more <laughs> that I could say in each of these areas, but we'll keep it short, we'll keep it sweet. Okay, for the don'ts. The first don't is do not be intimidated. And all of my tips that I'm giving this evening, it's like I'm talking to myself. Like this is, this is what I'm learning as I try to get more brand partnerships, really take this thing up a notch. Um, and one thing I have to tell myself is to not, be intimidated. Don't get caught up in the followers I don't have. Let's not get caught up in what I could have done a little better here. These are all great lessons to take move forward. But if, you know, working with brands and really um, creating relationships with them is something that you want to do, even if you got two followers, I say go ahead and do it. Um, the influencer marketing game is so vast. It's not just for those who have thousands and thousands of followers. Um, I have under 5,000 followers. I have about 1,700 folks. Um, but that audience is really, really engaged and that's what brands uh, care about. So if you have a smaller following but folks are really engaging, they're commenting, you know what I'm saying? There's no reason to be intimidated and there's no reason not to reach out and, and get started. So that would be my first don't. Don't get intimidated. Don't get caught up by the other folks you may see because you can do it too. And with the industry and marketing changing the way it is, folks are looking more and more to those who engage on a much realer, organic level with their followers, like the nano influencers who are under 10,000 followers, like the micro influencers and all those different types of folks. So that's my first don't. Don't be intimidated. Don't count yourself out. My second don't is don't be afraid to engage. I think this is something that's this has been like one of my most fruitful ways of connecting with people and getting the contact information I need to pitch certain brands on an idea I may have. Um, but don't be afraid to engage. I'm always tagging the brands that I enjoy, the, the folks that I or the uh, products that I use in my stories. Um, I'm engaging on their stuff. I'm sharing their posts. I'm tagging them under their comments when I feel so inclined. Um, don't be afraid to engage. The great thing about social media, and, and I'm sure many of us have experience with this, is that you have direct contact with the brand. Um, those who are managing the social media profiles are definitely looking through your comments. They're looking through the DMs, and they're looking to do the same thing, engage. I actually, uh, yesterday, um, and you all will, may see on my story still, may have timed out, but yesterday I had to go into my office for particular reasons. I was able to check out some of the businesses in the area my business, or my, excuse me, my office was in um, and tagged some brands that I recognized, you know, along the way. I got a DM for one of those brands. Um, and now I have the email for one of those brands. And if I, when I look back on our messaging, we have been back and forth organically and quickly for quite some time. So it wasn't the first time um, I engaged with this particular company or product. It wasn't um, the first time they hopefully have seen my name or seen me supporting them. And I think that little bit of engagement goes a long way. It shows that you are invested in some degree in this particular person's product or their brand or their brand journey. And um, it's just a good look. It's always great when, um, you know, it makes it a little easier to make that connection, right? And I think um, engaging in a real way online and via Instagram translates or can translate into these brand partnerships that we're talking about into you know you getting some free products and being able to try something out and providing a testimonial or a review or a blog post or a YouTube video it starts with you know engaging online and engaging as you can so don't ever think tag them brands you know what I'm saying they, they see it <laughs> they're gonna see it and it builds you builds up a little legacy with, with the person. And I will have to say a lot, you know, I'll do cold call pitches, right? Where I literally, I'll literally look at the brands I'm following or just the stuff in my kitchen. What do I enjoy, right? What cook, what coffee do I drink, right? What products do I use to make my life easier? What headphones are these? I got to reach out to Soundcore. Soundcore. That's, that's what this is. Soundcore. Um, what headphones are these? What wine do I drink? Shout out to, to Yellowtail, right? <laughs> um, start with those, you know, you actually use. Everybody has a social media pr platform now. 
and a presence. So tag them. Let them know that you enjoy uh, their products. Let them know directly how you feel about it. And I think it sets you up for success when it's time to take that relationship because that's what it is, right? A relationship to the next level. Y'all know how it is. Real connections can be can be made online. We got internet friends. So make internet friends with some brands. And um, while all cold call brands, I think, you know, this approach uh, engaging first or engaging organically and truthfully and building up is um, a lot more effective, a lot more promising and a lot more rewarding. I feel good when a brand hits me back because I tag them on a, on a story. I feel a little special. <laughs> it does a little something for my spirit. <laughs> and it allows me to keep going and maybe reach out to them via email or whatever it is. Okay. And the last thing I'll say, uh, the last don't I'll provide. So let me recap real quick. So the first don't is don't be intimidated. I don't care how small or big your following is. If it's something that you want to do, if you want to start um, um, working with brands and promoting the products that you enjoy, just get started. The followers don't matter as much as the engagement and the folks that are really liking your stuff. Those are the people who matter. And that's what the what companies care about, too. The second don't is don't be afraid to engage. Like I was just explaining, don't be afraid to start with what you got in your home. And if you feel so inclined to share your thoughts on something, good, bad, or otherwise, feel free to tag that brand. I'm sure they um, appreciate the shout out. They appreciate the, the business and the exposure. Um, and that's a great way to kind of start your relationship with a brand or the folks who may run their social media or partnerships is don't be afraid to engage and make a real connection on social media so you can take it offline. And the last don't I'll give for this evening is don't give up or rather, or rather, um, don't forget to follow up. I think there's such power in the follow up. And that goes back into the post I, I gave today. It was a carousel post that shared the final product in a sense, which is this, uh, content post that TGI did, did and featured me on their page. I developed it for them in the beginning of the year. Um, but my engagement with TGIN started via email anyway. In 2019, I was introduced to the brand. I remember I went to the In Natural Hair Studio show with my girl Disa. It was hosted on the campus of UMD out here in the DMV area. And um, it was a, a trade show for all things natural beauty and natural hair care. And um, in per it was in-person networking opportunities, and that's exactly what I did. Um, I mentioned a little bit earlier some of the skills I kind of went into this journey of career of marketing and all the other stuff. It started with me enjoying speaking to people. That's why I chose journalism. That's why I'm in marketing and PR, and that's why I'm trying to get on this influencer tip, okay? I enjoy speaking with people. Um, I, You know, I'm a natural interviewer. That's just something I enjoy. So I first initially made contact with TJN in person at this event that happened in 2018 it had to be I asked them and I just straight up said look I like what you guys are doing I took their samples I tried the samples out I loved the samples TJN is a great brand I don't have to do another live <laughs> just on the, the product line itself because I really do love them but I realized I loved them and I said hey let me reach out because I would love to use more of these products and also share this with my friends um my friends and loved ones, you know, one of the um, areas I get a lot of kudos and shout outs for is my hair and how I style it and all these other things. And um, I'm so appreciative of that. And I was like, let me, um, you know, let me dive in. Let me lean in into this and kind of kind of see what that looks like. So anyway, I say that to say first met TJN in 2018 in person, tried out a sample of the products that I got from the conference, said, hey, this is a brand I'd love to work with, reached out to them in 2019. And the reason I was able to get uh, make it official in 2020 and 2021 and now have, you know, some of my content promote their uh, product being in Target stores nationwide is because I believe in the power of follow up, <laughs> follow up, thoughtful follow up at that. So when you reach out to someone and you've given them that all star pitch, you've already done your research, right? Well, first off, let me back up a little bit. You already done major profile brand ready you change it to a little business profile you have an idea of what your engagement and your analytics look like you've done your research you know what brand you want to reach out to you've nailed down the person that you want to reach out to you figured out their email address you looked on linkedin you did what you had to do you have your information and you send this thoughtful pitch it got a good headline it's got all the little elements right it's got a good headline it's concise 
It's direct. It links to your profile and crickets. You don't hear nothing. That's like the worst feeling, putting all that work. Because it takes a lot of work just to even get ready to reach out and do that. Um, so if you do all that, and you don't get a response, it's a little, it's a little crushing to the spirit. But you can be confident that a follow-up can help to change that. And I'm a testament to that with TJN and honestly any other brand partnership I had. People are busy, especially those who are managing influencer marketing. Can you imagine how many emails and DMs and requests and just, uh, you know, that they may be getting at any given time? Not to mention what it takes to actually run an ongoing campaign or be consistent with your social media as a, as a brand or as a product or as a company. These folks are busy. So it's real likely that they did not see your email or it was not relevant to them at the time. And so that's another reason why it's important just to keep tabs on what the brands are doing. You know, just take a little look. You know what I'm saying? What are they promoting at the time? What do I see on their social media platform? So when you do follow up, when you need to follow up, you can at least make it relevant to them, right? That's part of the follow up game. It's not always, hey, just following up on this. Hi, bumping up to the top of your inbox. What that may look like is, responding in that thread and changing your subject line right or following up in that thread or like oh my gosh i saw that you guys are starting to promote this i think i would be greatly aligned to help you promote that because of x y and z see below the message i sent you a couple weeks ago so don't be afraid to follow up don't forget to follow up and make sure that follow up is thoughtful because that also shows the brand that you have the ability to follow through and that there is some of there is there of some importance to you. I think that that that's major as well. Like, you know, you're a professional. You understand the power of the follow up. You understand sometimes the need for follow up, and you understand that it's important to be gracious when you do follow up. People are busy, and it's good to show that you understand, um, and good to show that you you know in there anyway. And you know that comes too from my experience as a journalist, having to pitch folks or request interviews and knowing how necessarily how necessary excuse me that follow up is um as a, as a pr person part of me also as a journalist when i get pitches i know what i like to see <laughs> and react to and i ignore those that i don't um yeah i think don't forget to follow up don't give up don't forget to follow up and don't forget to be thoughtful in your follow-up and also my experience as a, a person who uh broke with partnerships for a former company of mine Follow up is real. If you want the money, you want the partnership, you're going to follow up. And I think that's so important. So as we kind of close, it's 843. Okay, cool. Been on here about 45 minutes or so. Um, this is so good. Um, so let me recap really quickly. Three do's and don'ts of brand partnerships. If you're getting started, if you're growing an audience like myself, um, if you're a nano influencer or an aspiring influencer, blogger, etc., someone who's interested in doing this, some things that I've learned are do know your value proposition, what you provide and what um, demographic you really reach, you really reach with your content. Two, do ensure your profile is brand ready, brand friendly. Three, do your research, make sure you're contacting the correct person at the correct company at the correct time as much as you can. And my three don'ts are don't be afraid to engage comments dms tagging on the stories all of that don't be intimidated right it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of followers or a lot of bit of followers you matter the companies are trying to engage with you too right because they're trying to reach your target audience so don't be intimidated i have under 2,000 followers and had some great um experience thus far and great uh results and the third don't is don't give up and don't forget to follow up people are busy the inboxes are full Make sure your follow-up is thoughtful when you do follow up and that it's relevant to the person reading your email. And um, yeah, you may get some results. Those are a little bit of, of my lessons. I loved this. Thank you everybody who joined and commented and asked a few questions. If you have any more questions, let me know. Drop them in the comments, um, either here or on my profile. And yeah, thank you all for joining. Thank you all for supporting and showing love to the content to what's on my instagram feed it feels amazing to have friends and just people who are into it and um it's fun i love creating in this little space of the internet of mine so the more i know the more i'll share <laughs> all right y'all cheers didn't even drink any of my wine it's time to go maybe i'll watch some tv um but yeah thank you guys so much for joining 
See you later.